Well, hello everyone. Um, we are here uh, today to make a presentation about selling the open source philosophy. So uh, this uh, session was switched uh, with another one from yesterday. So maybe you guys can cannot be noticed uh, this by the schedule, the pressing schedule. So, well, um, it, it's a uh, um, a presentation by me, Renato Vasconcelos, and Lucas Arruda. I'm from Tyler, um, a Drupal shop from Brazil. And Lucas, uh, can you present yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome you guys and thank you for being here this morning. Um, I'm going to present myself. Uh, okay. So, uh, my name is Lucas Arruda. I'm from Brazil, Campinas. And currently, I work as a software architect uh, in the Drupal competence of, C of CINT. CINT is a company, uh, an IT company from Brazil. And currently, we have around 200, almost 300 people working with Drupal there. So, it's a, a big multinational company with our headquarters in Brazil. And we have this Drupal competence office in which I have my full agenda dedicated to all Drupal issues within the company and also um, matters related to community relationship. Uh, I'm also an open source enthusiast. And actually, the presentation here uh, is based on some experiences that we had on trying to sell open source solutions to big companies. Uh, there's also one detail I'd like to point out that uh, actually my partner, Andrews, would give this presentation with me, but he would not be able to attend because some missing documentation that he could not get uh, ready for for going to Colombia and I'd like to thank you very much Renato for taking his place and giving this presentation with me both Andros and Renato work at Teller so they are working on a daily basis and they know each other very well and I'd like to Okay, so um, I'd like to make this presentation in honor yeah. of Hundros. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, because actually, uh, the whole idea is of him, his, and uh, I'm really sad that he's not here, so I'm making this in, in honor of him. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so here I am, Renato Vasconcelos, uh, trying to to cover and as better as I can our uh, peer Andros. I'm a software ar architect and developer at Tyler, um, a Drupal shop based in, uh, on Florianopolis, Brazil. I'm working with open source and agile um, communities for a while, and um, I think it's um, it's like almost eight years uh, on the road uh, doing web development and working with software. And especially with Drupal, I'm working like almost six years. So um, as, um, as Lucas uh, said, we are trying to share some uh, experience about how to sell that philosophy of open source. Um, and give some advices and tips that help you to achieve your goal of selling open source. Well, so um, uh, everybody already knows that um, it's, la it, it's um, um, a definition of the open, open source initiative that is, is basically um, uh, 
you, we have to to know what is the open source uh, philosophy. What is it? What is open source actually? So the open source uh, initiative defines that uh, the goal or the promise of open source is harness uh, distributed peer review in order to guarantee quality, reliability, uh, flexibility, low cost or cost control, stability, and end of the vendor um, lock-in. So uh, we, we have to take in mind that the the, the goal of the open source is to have like software that can be done by um, people that are passionate about this and that have lots of quality because we have lots of people looking for this and we don't have like one single vendor uh, working with this and like locking you into a solution that you cannot have like the flexibility that the open source provides to you. So here, here goes a question. Is that hard to sell open source? Do you think it's hard to sell open source? Sorry? Who is listening to you? Yeah, I agree with you. So uh, we're trying to, um, we have like to refute some myths about the open source because as you said, uh, the people uh, that are uh, listening to us when uh, we start talking about open source, trying to sell some solution based in, the, in open source, there are some myths that we, uh, we have to bust them in order to start talking with like no prejudice or like uh, a, a really clear vision of uh, what is the reason about uh, the open source and why it's like the most um, um, the most uh, appropriate. appropriate solution for uh, in order to have quality, flexibility, and low costs. Um, okay, so the first myth that we usually hear from people when we are talking about open source is that open source is insecure. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about this. Why people think that open source is insecure? Uh, there is this general thought. Uh, mainly on people that are not used to the open source culture and they the first thing one of the first thing that they hear is that open source uh, is a code that you that anyone can change right that you are free to do whatever you want so uh, if anyone can change people start to think that perhaps a hacker or some bad intention people can be there and insert a malicious code or a code that will uh, will insert a, a bug or a security breach and stuff like that. And actually this is not true because uh, all open source projects have what we call their maintainers, right? So in general, these maintainers uh, can choose whether or not they can approve or reject a feature, a pull request, a piece of code that another people is trying to, is suggesting that this, this code is inserted into the original project. So the first myth that we need to refute is that not everyone can make changes to that code, okay? Uh, everyone can suggest improvements, bug fixing, enhancements, but this uh, usually goes through an approval workflow in which the maintainers can choose to approve or reject the change, okay? And usually this is a strict process, okay? And we, we're going to look at this further in the presentation, but you have to be in mind that, and, and you can say that to, to your clients or your prospects, uh, a lot of Big companies, big corporations are investing on open sourcing, are using open source solutions, and they would certainly not do that if we could, uh, if this would not be a strict process, okay? Uh, the second myth is that, oh, actually, 
we're not we are in, in insecure uh, yet uh, security is something that uh, is not only to deal with uh, open source projects on proprietary soft softwares that you have your code closed you can also find security breaches right because you have a lot of ways to test to do exploratory tests on uh, closed softwares as well uh, you can make injections and a lot of other uh, manners to uh, explore, exploit security breaches on security so on proprietary softwares. So uh, it's not meant that only by closing the source code of your software, this means that it's secure, right? Uh, and we have to remember that collaboration is one think that it's very important for security measures because when we have a lot of people looking into the same code base and uh, trying to find issues, trying to fix that secur security breaches, uh, usually these resolutions are much more faster that, than uh, code of proprietary companies that have their own release times uh, and not to mention that we have uh, third parties, other vendors, the community itself much more interested on releasing those security fixes and making the, the solution more stable. Okay, And for certain uh, paid softwares, you have also to pay for that security releases. And that's something that not happened with open source. Okay, so some still saying that open source quality is low, but why do they say this uh, actually? Um, um, personally, um, I'm, I don't, can, I cannot ac understand because I'm really involved with the open source community. So to me, it's like um, normal to see the quality of the open source um, projects and solutions, but. Um, Something that um, Lucas said um, is that uh, they have uh, a fear of uh, the of not having control about the uh, like a vendor controlling this code or the evolving of the project because um, the businessmen um, are like um, used to think in the um, like the old center of how to sell products so they base the arguments of uh, selling in um, um, in the uh, cre uh, credits that the vendor has in the market and this can be um, a, a piece of um, point that you have to mention that uh, a vendor cannot like uh, guarantee uh, actually they can but not vendors can guarantee all the support and quality because if you have a, a software or a project that have a huge community behind of it, you have like too many people that are able to support you and provide you services and like consulting or everything o o over the software. So again, it's more people looking at the code and there's lots of people passionate and collaborating with this software in order to evolve it. So uh, that is the, the point. We have a team dedicated to do this. So um, the um, Coverity report, uh, scan report for open source, and it's a uh, report that usually to run uh, code analysis and through um, projects that is open or proprietary, and it's used by NASA, SAP, Microsoft, and some other huge vendors in the market, in the IT market, and it one of the most um, reliable metrics about the evolving of the quality of the software. So um, the numbers of the facts for every uh, 100 line, uh, it's the metric of uh, the Coverity Scam report. So you can see that the open source had a point uh, 59 
and over a 0.72 um, um, defects over 100 lines in comparison with proprietary software. So we can see in the in this um, graphic that the the curve of defects that are fixed with over the time um, is like um, really um, really significant because uh, the the curve is different because the open source in order to have uh, the uh, because of open source have too many people working with this and. They have to solve this problem because they're working in project that has to be uh, these uh, fixes. Uh, they evolve faster. Uh, it's it's um, uh, it's it's something like you have more people or more resources to solve the problems than you have uh, with a proprietary uh, uh, solution because they have their limited their, their limited team team that can be like. Uh, a large amount of people, but they have their own priorities. So the priorities of the clients may be not the same as the uh, as the ve the vendors. So that's a point that uh, uh, illustrate how the evolving of open source it's more uh, frequent and um, the number of issues is um, really. Um, significant in comparison with proprietary software just because of the arguments I already said. So the Coverity scan report of open source uh, says that 8 out of 10 people surveyed are choosing open source based on quality. So it's like uh, um, it's it, it's strange because as people choose open source because of the quality People still saying that open source it, it's like has a poor quality. So why can do uh, understand these affirmatives in order of having these numbers about how many people are choosing open source based on uh, the quality of the, the 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 software the solution? So open source code quality surpasses proprietary code quality in C and C plus plus projects. Um, according to the Coverity scan report for open source. And also, um, if software is eating the world, so then open source is leading the charge. So it's um, a phrase from Zach Zamocha, a senior director of products of Coverity. So it's like uh, it's a vision of the future because the the we, we today we can see, and the numbers prove that that the open source have the the right place and is getting more uh, into the IT um, market uh, over the years. Uh, the first, the the third myth that we usually hear is that. Uh, if you have a lot of people working voluntarily for an open source project, uh, so does it mean that uh, this software does have does not have any owner, right? So uh, it gives the impression that uh, there is no one to actually claim for when uh, something bad happens. So there is no company behind that software to to argue with or to complain uh, because actually it's a bunch of people working voluntarily to evolve that software on their free time and, and whatever they choose. Uh, that doesn't work that way actually. We have a bunch of companies that offer qualified uh, technical services and support 24 by 7 365 years per year on on these softwares on, on a lot of on top of a lot of uh, open source softwares. So uh, you can see, for example, Canonical on top of Ubuntu and Acre on top of Drupal, Zen on top of PHP, and re more recently, Microsoft on top of .NET Framework that has just been released as an open source project. Actually, last week 
its core. Uh, it's like the JVM for Java, so it's the, the virtual machine for .NET was also open source. So uh, Microsoft is now one of the companies that are behind of an open source project right now. So we have, yes, we have a lot of companies that provide qualified support for open source projects. Uh, not to mention uh, free support that the community itself gives for us. So we have for example, the MIRC. I'm, no, I'm not sure if you are used to that live chat platform. Uh, a lot of open source communities uh, discuss uh, in, within this platform. Uh, we have Stack Overflow, so uh, you, you can post your questions and receive answers from the community. And a lot of people from that uh, that companies that I showed you are actively working on Stack Overflow. You can see that they, they answer questions and for free. You don't have to, to pay anything. Uh, you have forums, internet forums. You can discuss uh, a lot of things, uh, mailing lists, online documentations. Uh, a lot of open source projects have a full and well-documented uh, on their, on their own sites. So this is resources that it's always available and you can get it for free anytime you want. And that's something that usually uh, only open source projects uh, have. But uh, not every open source project have all these things that we just told you, okay? Uh, life is not a bed of roses, and it's important to know uh, which open source uh, we should choose to invest or not to give our time on. Uh, we need to look at the ecosystem that it's around this open source project, because it doesn't mean that just by open sourcing a piece of code, so you get your piece of code and put it on GitHub and okay, now it has stability, uh, reliability, uh, an active community. No, it's, it's not like that. You, you need to get to know the ecosystem that it's around a certain open source project. And usually this ecosystem has another name that it's easy to know by community. Okay, so it's very important, important to get to know the community around a certain open source project. Uh, let's recap uh, a little bit what we just, uh, this myth that we just talked about. Uh, open source is insecure, so we, we saw that actually it's, it's not. Uh, quality is low, we have some metrics stating uh, some important metrics for coverage stating that the quality actually is better for some certain technologies and that nobody owns, no one supports. So we have the community support and we have companies that are willing to support for paid services. Uh, so these are some of the initial arguments that you can use to show that your to your clients or your prospects that they can start investing on open source projects. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy that we busted these myths because we need to uh, look at these arguments that people say about open source being bad or being uh, a not good solution. And we need to be actually the myth busters of open source. So now that we just busted these three myths, here comes another question that's pretty much related to our conference here. Uh, is that hard to sell Drupal? So I'll try to give some information about um, how can you, how can we prove that there's, uh, if it's uh, actually hard to sell Drupal because we have uh, a lot of um, methods or like um, 
tools in Drupal uh, project, in Drupal community, to enforce the security of the system. So we have a security team dedicated uh, to find and correct and f uh, fix the bugs. And um, it's, they are uh, really um, dedicated to it, to it. So if you can find a bug or like a critical um, issue in a module that can be a security issue, you can um, note, uh, get the notes about, about this and they will help you to solve this and and when it's sold, they will open the the new release of the module in order to prevent like attacks during the correction. So we have also peer review. So uh, it's it's it gives us uh, more secure about the code because it's not like one person doing everything and anyone else can look at the code and say, oh, it's not like in our standards, oh, you should do this because it's more um, efficient. So the peer review is a matter that can uh, improve the quality of the software and guarantee the Drupal security. We have also the peer review SH script. So it's uh, a script that we run over the code uh, trying to prevent uh, bad patterns and, and, and trying to guarantee um, the quality of the code and the standardization of the solutions by running stat code uh, analysis and things like that. We, we also have lots of automated tasks in order to gu guarantee the, that the features is working and everything is uh, on they should be. So we have uh, these mechanisms that guarantee the security of the Drupal project. So this is um, a, a really good argument to use in order to prove the security of Drupal. So we have uh, in the Drupal um, lots of uh, mechanisms that we use with the peer review sh script and patterns that prevent uh, the major flaws uh, that a software can have so we have pre uh, preventions for injections cross site scripting session management and cross site request forgery that was the most uh, common security security issues on um, projects uh, today so uh, some some projects uh, some companies actually uh, think that they uh, would be more successful if they try to build their own CMS we heard that a, a lot of companies uh, start building their own C CMS and actually they need to deal with all these security issues by themselves okay and Drupal has uh, prevention for all these major security issues for those top 10 OS uh, vulnerabilities by uh, internally uh, building on, on its own. So you don't have to, to worry about any of these uh, security breaches because Drupal already deals with that pretty much, uh, right? Yeah, so we have more about Drupal security. So uh, you have vulnerability tests like Veracode and Qualys. So it's like a really uh, well-known um, uh, names uh, in the security um, track or security industry. So we have is Drupal Secure website in order to um, show all these arguments if you need to get more information about it. You also have uh, I really use a uh, um, case study that White House switched to Drupal, so it can be a really an, a good argument uh, to sell in Drupal because it's one of the most uh, um, attacked websites uh, in the world. So if they are using Drupal, it uh, it it should mean that this is, the Drupal is secure. Don't you agree with me? I think. So we also uh, have to uh, 
say that Drupal is PCI compliance. So we have all these arguments that prove that the, uh, Drupal is secure, and we have all these mechanisms to gar guarantee this. Yeah, uh, we are going to share the, this presentation, and most uh, some of these topics are linked linked to external uh, references. So, uh, for example, uh, this uh, PCI compliance uh, is linked to uh, an external reference which describes uh, how Drupal deals with uh, transaction and payment information and uh, how this is really secure and you can build uh, for instance uh, an e-commerce uh, robust solution on top of Drupal with no no issues uh, concerning uh, user and, and credit card information and stuff like that well and we have to say also about the quality of Drupal so um, what is the mechanism that we have to guarantee this quality? We have coding standards, so we have a well-known working agreement to, uh, into the community to work and contribute with Drupal. So this is a way to prevent uh, the chaos of the project, and it guarantees the quality. We have also the peer review, also it it's helps in the quality. Um, as I said, the PR review script and also the automated tasks. But the thing is that the quality um, is uh, directly related by our community because uh, we are a huge amount of people that want to have a, a, a really uh, um, good software and we have uh, the will of making this uh, more efficient and uh, uh, and have a really um, good software in terms of quality. So we have some sh showcases that uh, could help to uh, illustrate the security and the quality of Drupal. So we have something, uh, some um, good, na really well-known names like ING or uh, the White House, The Economist, PayPal, Johnson, and all of these uh, uh, well-known names in the market that choose Drupal, and it's based on his quality and security. Uh, and one of the most common approach that uh, I suggest to you to take is trying to figure out a good case, and mainly vertical to the same industry industry of. Uh, your prospect of the client that you're going you're trying to achieve that project and show them uh, how they uh, these projects are working on on these websites so if you're trying to sell into uh, a healthcare industry uh, you have pretty much uh, excellent cases uh, on Johnson Johnson and Pfizer for instance uh, uh, if we're trying to sell for a financial uh, industry, we have the ING that I'm going to explain a little bit further. So try to get uh, a case uh, to show to a client from the same uh, the same market share. And it's very interesting that ING uh, adopted Drupal on its uh, solutions stack. And we have this article here on Tree's blog. And it's very interesting, this first sentence of his, which is, you know when a piece of software is mature, when it starts being adopted by financial services organizations. Uh, why, uh, which, what does that mean? Uh, usually, financial organizations are very and strictly traditional. So. Uh, it's very hard for them to change and mainly uh, to adopt a solution that has all these myths and, and discussions uh, concerning security, stability, quality and so on. So uh, we can uh, say that if this uh, traditional financial organization really adopted and invested on top of Drupal uh, it certainly it's a very mature platform. Okay. 
so uh, in order to empower your pre-sales process even more, uh, most of people forget that we have also Drupal.com website, which has a more commercial uh, appeal, a more pre-sales appeal. So uh, uh, I suggest that you visit Drupal.com and you get to know a lot of references on uh, and arguments and cases as well that will try that will help you convince your client to adopt this platform. Okay, so and um, and you have another argument that you can use, and it's make a really difference when you're trying to sell open source. That is, you're getting a um, lot of things for free. So in the Drupal case, we have, in, uh, in case of Drupal, we have more than 30, um, hundred modules. So they are piece of software that was developed by some company that needed this solution and they use that, uh, their resources in order to build these modules and contribute back to the community. So you doesn't have to, uh, recreate the wheel so it's almost um, every uh, every um, piece of software that can uh, you can use to solve your problem and you have uh, 30 hundred um, modules that can help you with the, uh, with this you also have 20 part point 100 themes so it will help you to to uh, start the development of your solution and you can also choose a uh, contributed team in order to doesn't have to build your custom team if you, you if you doesn't have time or if you prefer so it's just for free you have like 3700 developers working with Drupal and you get this support in uh, for free because if you're using this software and they there uh, this uh, these developers are working with you. So you had uh, a lot of people and support for free. You have also 2.500 commits per week. So it's like a huge amount of code that you have that you get for free. And you have a 500 issue comments per week. So it's a project that uh, have lots of discussion and the collaboration is uh, really uh, important, and it's all. All these uh, things are for are free uh, to try to charge, and you get this. Your clients uh, can start from zero with all these things, and they doesn't have to pay nothing to, uh, for this. Yes, uh, the point here. Um, is actually uh, clients love to see numbers. So, uh, what the message that you should give to a client when presented these numbers is that uh, you actually can reuse a lot of things. So, a lot of things are already built and ready to be used. And what does that mean? Does it means a faster time to market? They also love that sentence. Uh, and. It really uh, means that uh, you are going to build less things from scratch. Okay, you are going to reuse a lot of stuff and end the project uh, in a faster uh, timeline. And that's really a, a good, very good argument on trying to sell Drupal. Yeah. So, and everything um, uh, can be more and uh, even better because we have like uh, more than 1 million people in uh, 229 countries speaking 118 languages uh, in this project. So we have a really mature uh, solution uh, uh, in meaning of multi-language and support in your language and uh, at your time because we have a lot of people working all over the world and this support can be used for free in the forums and IRC and other uh, um, tools that you can get this um, to um, and that you can uh, use that uh, to prove that they will have support by the community. And 
one one more uh, interesting thing that uh, you can say to your client, and it's a nice thing to to think about, is uh, if you are reusing a lot of stuff from the community, and we have those huge numbers of people actually working on these projects. Uh, don't you agree with me that they are indirectly working on my project for free? Okay, so yes, we are going to have people all around the world, the world working on those models, themes, and code that I'm using on my project, trying to improve them, fixing security breaches, bug fixing, and I'm not paying actually nothing for that. Yeah. And there's a ultimate sentence in the Drupal community that is, that is a module for that. So what is what it does? Uh, what it means actually? It it, it try to uh, represent the power of reusing uh, reusing things uh, through modules, themes, and this kind of stuff because you have. A lot of developers uh, working with this, and you just have to uh, get and put in production. So it helps you, uh, you uh, to tranquilize your clients because they uh, have uh, the known that they already have a lot of software that is um, uh, ra ready for production. So you will, you will uh, save time and save money. And all these existing pieces can be put together in order to make uh, a, a better solution for the client's needs. So it's it's like um, it's like starting with almost uh, the final solution, uh, even if you didn't start developing, because the code, the modules, and everything are already uh, read, ready. And Actually. despite the using your own solution that it's in-house and nobody else knows about it you are using and a lot of uh, more than a million people are using the same models and solutions all around the world uh, so it's uh, it gets a time that the solution the solutions are very well tested and reliable because simply a lot of people are using and Reporting and fixing them, evolving them. And we, and we have um, another thing that you can use that is the Drupal Lightning profile. So some of you that uh, ha may have in the Acu Partner Summit and the first day of the conference uh, could see the product, and it will it was uh, built as an Acquia sales tool and. Uh, it's a demo framework that you can use to show these common scen scenarios for your clients. So in order to, so to, to show them that Drupal has a, already a really mature uh, solutions or products uh, based on um, different industries. So you can have like internet uh, already, uh, uh, already ready to use. Uh, like you have also commerce solutions, you have searching solutions, uh, we have responsiveness, you have multilingual, and all of these things uh, uh, is already there and for free for your clients. So it's perfect to show your clients how Drupal can be awesome and what Drupal can do for them. Um. Any anyone here already uses the demo framework in your per sales process? Can you Nobody. Raise your hands? Uh, do any of you use the demo framework on your per sales process already? No. So uh, uh, so I really suggest you take a little time and take a look at the, this demo framework. You can just download it. Uh, it's a Drupal project, so drupal.org slash project slash DF from demo framework. And during installation, you can choose among a list of profiles uh, which bring 
you a full working platform with dummy content to show your client uh, all the power that Drupal gives us. Okay, so this, uh, as uh, Renato said, this was using by Acrea to as a, a sales tool, and it's now available for uh, us to, to leverage it and show our clients uh, what Drupal can do for commerce, for multilingual responsiveness, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it really uh, it really helps to sh visually show the present to the client uh, this kind of stuff at the Drupal.org website. So it's a project like a module. So it's Drupal.org slash project slash DF from Demo Framework. Yeah. And it... It's like a Drupal distribution. So it's a Drupal installation with a lot of built-in modules from the community already configured to, to a specific showcase. And uh, this is also one very important thing. Uh, if you need to help on trying to sell Drupal to your clients, uh, partner with Acrea, okay? Because they can help you a lot as a co-selling process. And we talk a little bit about this on Acrea Partner Day uh, on this Monday. And we had a case by Rafael Ciccini from Just Digital. Uh, and he told us how good it was to partner with Wacchio because he has a small kind of small company and Acrea is helping them a lot on trying to sell Drupal to his clients. So they help you, they help you with material, with uh, presentations, meetings, uh, they actually can send people to help you and go to the client and try to, to sell that project. So uh, I really recommend you to, to talk with uh, an Acre representative and try to make some partnership with them. Uh, so let's summarize a little bit of what we just talked about. Uh, security and quality of Drupal. So we uh, saw a little data and some metrics stating that Drupal has a major workflow for uh, accepting changes and has automated tests and a lot of scripts that go through all pieces of code and giving feedback whether or not that code is really secure and has quality. Uh, we also saw that Drupal is being adopted by a lot of large organizations. So this gives us and our clients much confidence in uh, adopting into our businesses as well. And community tools and support. So we have some companies such as Acquia and a lot of community stuff that can help us in getting support for this product. Uh, okay. But, uh, okay, we sold the project. Now what? Uh, we are making money with Drupal, right? Using a lot of stuff that the community gave us for free that other companies uh, paid for, uh, used their own resources and time and budget to build something and gave back to the community, and we are simply using them and having success with this stuff. Uh, isn't just fair if we try to maintain this ecosystem as well, instead of sucking everything from the community and giving not back. Uh, so there's this Drupal slogan, so when you access Drupal.org, it's right below the Drupal logo. And I think this explains pretty much what I'm talking about. Uh, you came for the software, right? So why not be part of this community? Why not be part of this ecosystem and help to maintain it? Uh, now we are going to present some of the advantages that 
open source project have uh, that will give you a little bit of an idea why you should care about maintaining this this culture going on. Yeah. So we had uh, a listing of, of points that can show the advantages um, uh, that open source have, that only open source projects have. So they, are, they have alignment with social values. So people can f uh, uh, feel like uh, into the community and it, it, it gives us um, the notion of we are doing something better for, for the next generations, can, I, uh, can you say? So it's like really uh, aligned with social values in order to, to, to provide uh, better things to the others, so uh, uh, proprietary projects uh, doesn't uh, brings this f culture, this feeling, um, so it can be used as an argument. So um, it's like um, a way of thinking, a mindset that uh, you can use in order to um, to org to your clients. Um, uh, actually, we have some. Uh, different uh, ways of dealing with this. Uh, for example, uh, if you have to convince your manager or some, someone uh, above you in your company's hierarchy that you should give back uh, a suggestion that uh, you, can, you can try to, to use is look at the, your company's mission, credo, and these kind of statements because usually, and I had this experience, uh, it's stating there, uh, most of the companies, that they care about the community that they are involved in, uh, in, in a more generic way, but this uh, fits very well on, on Drupal community. If you are in, uh, involved, if your company are involved in this community, it makes totally sense to help it grow and maintain it. Uh, another, another situation, it's quite common for a large organization with large clients, is that uh, you're going to try to convince your client who has paid for the code that you are developing that you should give back this code to the community. And he's going to ask you, uh, but I paid for this project. I paid for this piece of code. Uh, why should I give it back to the community so or, or other competitive industries or companies are going to use it? Uh, okay, but remember that 30,000 modules that you are using on your project that saved you time, budget, and resources, many other companies paid for that as well, and you can use that approach too. Many other companies use it, their time, their budget, and uh, decided to help uh, the project grow uh, in the end. So um, they, they have another thing that is um, like only in the, the open source mindset that you have a continuous improvement that uh, you can uh, rely because the, the community is working uh, for growing the project and building a better solution. So this is like something that your client will get and it, it, it will continue getting from the community and uh, they won't have to, uh, they will don't have to pay for this continuous improvement. It's, it's not like when you buy a software that you have to uh, wait for the, the The, the release time. You you cannot wait uh, for the release time of the software because uh, the the open source projects have uh, a really short release time because there are so many people working and trying to uh, fix all those things and make uh, build new features. So it's the improvement is continuous and the clients uh, will get this with open source software. 
you have also the possibility of forking. So uh, open source uh, allows you to to make changes if you doesn't like something, and the client have the flexibility of doing this if they are working with open source projects or Drupal in uh, this specific uh, situation. And it's it's also easy um, to identify qualified the skill skill labors because we have all these um, mechanisms uh, mechanisms in the community that you can use as a resource for uh, identifying these um, providers or these these developers. Okay, so. working okay it's working just a second I get lost here well so you have the flexibility of creating your stuff because in open source you you can customize things because you have the code you can see that code so the possibility of create new features it's at an advantage over the proprietary software because your clients doesn't have to uh, ask them or see if the, it's a pri prioritized uh, feature or issue that the the proprietary software uh, the vendor uh, is in mind. This is all about freedom, you know. This is all about you have the possibility to change in order to fit according to your needs. Yeah. So it's really a good advantage. So we have uh, and uh, also fast issue resolutions, just before, because of the amount of the community and all the people that are involved with this project. We also have great support uh, because all of the passionate people that are working with this software, we, and almost everything of this uh, advantage is it's for free because it co it comes from the community. So it's an it's a, a bonus a bonus that your client can uh, take in you know, when he's choosing uh, Drupal or an open source project. Um, and all of that just depends on one thing. So everything that we just said that uh, these advantages that open source have. Uh, all those be those benefits that the Drupal community and its major platform uh, gives us, uh, it depends on one thing, which is give back to the community. So uh, only doing that, we are going to keep the project evolving and maintain everything uh, that uh, <laughs> that keep this ecosystem around so alive and active. Okay? Thank you very much. This is it. So, uh, we would like to ask you for uh, evaluate this presentation so we can follow this link uh, at the bottom of the slide and also um, give us uh, your feedback about this presentation. We it's one single question. It's really very uh, fast to, to answer. So we we start for uh, open for questions. So if you have a doubt or, or something. Um, I would like to know more about the uh, Drupal security. Uh, if one client uh, um, ask for a security test for the uh, de developer projects in Drupal. Um, which steps uh, can I uh, can I make or can I do to 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 show to my client the security in their their web page, their the, the Drupal website? Uh, I know that uh, I need to to. Upgrade, for example, the, the latest re Drupal release. This, uh, this is for security. But I would like to know the steps. For example, uh, 
module uh, test security, user security, uh, view security. I, I don't know if it exists some some test to 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 uh, to test the Drupal security uh, in the projects. Um, actually, uh, for Drupal quality, we saw that we have that uh, report from Coverity, uh, which states uh, interesting data about how Drupal quality is better compared to other uh, other platforms. In terms of security, uh, we presented some vendors such as Vericode and Qualys. I'm not sure if you if you know them. Uh, that also uh, provide uh, mechanisms to scan and analyze a bunch of of security measures, but uh, I'm not sure if they have uh, a condensed report such as the one that we got. And you can also uh, use uh, use cases in order to. Uh, show this security because if you have like the White House choosing Drupal, it's really nice argument because uh, even though if you cannot show the tasks for your clients, maybe because they won't understand what they uh, what uh, actually do uh, uh, happening, you have these use cases that the su successful histories. Uh, about uh, applying Drupal in large organizations and government and universities, so it's it, it's easy to uh, I think it's an easy way to understand how it uh, it can be uh, reliable because there there these uh, organizations have also this concern about security and quality, and they still choose in Drupal over other solutions on the market. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, he's, he's uh, saying that Acura has a white paper about Drupal security, uh, which probably has some references regarding this. Uh, the way that the White House case is very known uh, it's um, actually because we just by presenting them it's for most of the cases just enough to tell that Drupal is kind of secure because it's actually one of the most attacked sites of the world. Uh, if you need further information, I would reach out for the security team. They probably have much information about this. That's 43 people and the presentation is linked to these contacts, uh, this, this team. And also, you could contact Qualys or Verco to see if they have such reports as the one that we got from Coverity in terms of how Drupal is secure compared to other platforms. Uh, my question is, what do you think about projects that once started as open source, but by the time goes on, the, the, there is another version that, that, that is paid and if you want a bug fees, for example, you, you have to pay for it. Can, can, you, can you ask again? Because I, I lost some points of your question. How about projects that start as open source, but by the time goes on, the, there is another, a new version that is paid. And if you want bug fixes or something, you have to pay for them. Then, uh, we have a kind of recent uh, situation uh, directly, uh, as, as you said, uh, which is MySQL, right? MySQL? Well, uh, actually, uh, I'm going to defer this to, to Renato, but uh, what, I what I was going to say is that uh, in general, what I see uh, that behavior that usually happens when this, this occurs, uh, you have an open source project, and suddenly a company acquires it and decided to close its source, right? Uh, certainly, the community around will 
fork it, and that's one of the advantages of the being open sourced. And another project will grow at the same time, open source. This, uh, an example, real example of this is when Oracle acquired MySQL and MariaDB turned out uh, to, to be a forked uh, project. And if you look at benchmarks, performance benchmarks, um, they are, in general, much better than MySQL itself that's now proprietary. So it, this is uh, the common behavior that happens when you try to close an open source project. The community will grow it by itself. With another name. It's okay. It's okay. Hi, this is Walter from, from Columbus. Um, my question actually, I mean, I, I noticed that Drupal.org and Drupal.com. So quite big difference when you put the pictures, right? So let's put it, I'm part of Drupal.com. So I belong to a multi-corporation, quite big telecommunication, uh, quite big one, uh, more than 25 countries and stuff like that. So in order for, for me to sell completely the idea, I always gonna have to fight hard. Why? The, from the point of view that I had to provide, you know, not just sec security access and, and things like that. It's like an engagement uh, for my corporation with Drupal. So the question exactly, uh, is resisted like an engagement process when a big corporation uh, want to use uh, your solutions uh, with the corporation itself? Regardless, you have to pay or whatever, you know, like a kind of like a contract, like a friendly contract, even paying, of course, for this kind of scenario, you need a bicycle enterprise, a nice, you know, infrastructure and, and stuff like that. I don't know if this is a legal question or uh, this. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I'd say that uh, when you are dealing with such a huge situation, I would certainly involve Acria to help on this, because. Are you part of Acria? You, you, you guys uh, work with Acria, right? See. Si. Si. Uh, I, I would certainly involve Acria because, uh, for instance, uh, we are at T in the middle of a pre-sales process with a huge financial institution, and yesterday some of our folks. Uh, were to Washington to give a pitch, and we invited some guys from Alkia to come with us and present all that stuff uh, in terms of hosting services and 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 engagement as well. And they have a really good team of people that can certainly help you with all that stuff you need in terms of arguments and so on. So uh, for, for these more complex uh, discussions, I would certainly involve Acre. They are behind of all of these, and they, they certainly know how to deal with it. Uh, yeah, my question is about the, uh, sometimes you have ideas from managers about incorporating uh, licensed software into Drupal, right? making like a hybrid. Um, what is your position about that? You know, how, how you feel about that, and 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 what should be like usually the answer that you, you know we can provide back to managers? Can, can you explain the last part of the question? Yeah, for example, um, they want to buy um, something just to manage e-learning, like online classes, right? But it's a licensed software uh, that we have to pay to develop. And they want then to hybrid that with our Drupal site, right? Which I think is creating dependencies in the long term because part of the site will be licensed, right? We cannot really manage that code. We don't own it. So what is what is your position about like a case like that? You know, what would be a good argument against that? I guess my question. I'll try to 
let me see if I can I could understand uh, uh, well your question. Um, so, are you asking uh, uh, what are our position about building hybrid solutions that are licensed? So, the, uh, you, you're uh, you're saying that uh, the client uh, will don't uh, like this hybrid solution? Is that the point? They they want to have a, hy a hybrid solution, but uh, I believe it's not a good idea because it's bringing a paid licensed software into our Drupal sites. So it, it, cre it creates a dependency. Because now, every time that we want to make a change in that licensed software, we have to pay for it. Uh, but this uh, licensed solution is something that your client wants to, to be used, that you cannot argue with that. They want, but I'm arguing against I don't want it. Yet because but I, well, I, I need better, more arguments, I guess. Yeah, sure. I, I think I got your, your question. Uh, first of all, I, I would try to search on an equivalent open source solution. You know, So uh, imagine that it's uh, an educational platform. So we have Moodle, Moodle. for instance. Right. right? And see if, that, uh, if the functional requirements fits, uh, because uh, uh, a part of platform, a part of code and what we're going to do, uh, the solution is built on top of functional requirements, right? So we try to map them and see if the platform fits or not or how much you're going to uh, uh, work on, um, on uh, adaptations. How much we're going to adapt the platform, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, there's there's no how to run out, run out of if your client really wants to use that and you know you're going to be attached to that licensed platform anyway I don't see how we can get out of this situation if it's a client's requirement you you can't argue with right. The, the, so Moodle, we consider Moodle, right? But what they, their argument is, they say, yes, Moodle, but you still have to customize Moodle, one, and, and that's going to be costly, and two, is too long. So their argument is like, no, let's buy this license software because they are faster, it's quicker, and at the end of the day, it's going to be the same money. But you know, my question is, in the long term, you're creating this dependency because you will always have to pay for these particular you know learning every time that you need to make a change yeah uh, I think uh, if the client uh, doesn't have the open ed, openness of uh, trying to think different in order to see the flexibility that we'll get on uh, choosing Moodle for example it's like you actually it's true that you you still have to customize some uh, things and have like to spend hours and uh, and have costs over the building these customizations but you already have uh, more uh, support by the community of this software because you can hire someone to consulting or you can hire some uh, uh, well uh, skilled developer that uh, builds some part of this project in order to make these customizations and uh, as the you can you have the possibility to talk with these people, uh, with the peop these people like uh, one by uh, one by one, you you have um, you have like uh, and uh, it's easier to achieve this goal because you can talk directly with the expert that did that. So it it brings like uh, a sense of confidence using the software, and if you have like uh, obviously, you you can compare the uh, uh, final solution that is proprietary or have license, and uh, a solution that is not like uh, the the real thing that you need, but can be that if you like spend a little bit of money and time, and the value that will get that you get with this, it's um, uh, mo uh, most um, significant then you choose like um, a proprietary software because they they are not thinking in uh, uh, your specific case. 
And you, when you're using uh, open source software, uh, you always uh, could have a, p a person that is concerned about your needs. So you have this uh, flexibility, this possibilities to engage some, someone and the, the contributions that this one, this uh, person is um, doing for you, uh, it's like uh, returns to, to them also because they are in an open source community and they are uh, improving the software so everyone's uh, um, gains, you know, it's a relation of gain and gain. So I think y you should have uh, show this to your client because as um, if they are like um, coming into an open source um, world, they they can have like um, uh, uh, they can bring um, recognition because uh, the people that use this software will. Uh, remember them also because they are contributing with uh, with the evolution of this software. You know, uh, just just to finish, I think that this is a much broader discussion. You know, but two practical things that came into my mind right now. Uh, first thing is I would go with comparison. So I do practically build a table of many uh, subjects, many topics, such as uh, how many people are. Uh, are in the market, so I could have to leverage Moodle or this closed platform. Um, uh, in, ter in long term, how can I extend this platform or not? Uh, how much adoption each platform has right now in the market? You know, a lot of stuff, and then I can present the pros and cons of each one. And secondly, uh, I understood that uh, some of the functional requirements that your client solution needs are missing on Moodle, but most of them are okay on this closed platform. It's pretty much why uh, the client is deciding to use the, the, this platform, right? Uh, I, I don't know if you have already gone into a value engineering process in which you break down all those functional requirements of this project and really uh, evaluate which ones are actually the most important for the client's business. So if you do that, perhaps you can see that some of these requirements that are not built on top of uh, Moodle but are okay, they're actually not so important for the, the business right now and you can, yes, uh, wait a little more and leverage the solution in, in a middle or long-term basis. You know, no problem. Any more questions? So uh, I really appreciate everyone's here. So here are our contacts. Uh, feel free to take a picture, and we can talk uh, further on this uh, on this subject, uh, perhaps on on different languages, if you wish. <laughs> okay, and please uh, access. The evaluation form is just one simple question. You don't even need to log into the, the form. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for, for your being here. And enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.